me welcome to Daily Talk with host Rich Fernando. Daily Talk is brought to you by Rich Fernando Productions and the Rich Fernando News Network. Join the groups on Facebook and join the Richard Fernando channel on YouTube. And here is your host, Rich Fernando. Now to start tonight's show. Good evening. Welcome to the Saturday. April 7, 2018 edition of Daily Talk with your host, Rich Fernando. Remember that every show is recorded and archived, and almost every show is also converted into YouTube videos. Uh, the recording of the call-in show itself, the audio, after it's recorded, is then utilized as the sound element of a a series of two, three, or four YouTube videos, uh, which appropriate video is added uh, during the production phase. Again, this is Daily Talk with your host, Rich Bernardo, uh, part of the Rich Bernardo News Network, a Rich Bernardo production. Tonight's topic is a very somber, uh, serious topic, and it it has to do, again, with the, the mass shootings that are taking place nationwide and have been for quite some time. And this one particularly hits home simply because I'm a YouTuber. I now have uh, about 1,900 videos up, give or take, on YouTube. I've been a YouTuber now for about three years. And anyone who uh, is an avid YouTuber who's familiar with my channel is perhaps familiar with the Richard Bernardo channel on YouTube. And tonight we're going to be talking about this dreadful uh, attack by a shooter at YouTube. And I want to welcome Dan Patrick uh, from Tampa, Florida, to the air. Good evening, Dan. Evening, Rich. How you doing? Uh, I guess we got more gun violence on the on the queue here tonight. Um, seems like it's never going to end. <laughs> but uh, you you know more about it than I do. So. Uh, well, I'll uh, tell you what, Dan. I'll, learn I'll start off. The, I'll start off the show by by feeling. Uh, everyone in on uh, on this woman who, who really uh, was indeed demented. And obviously to go on a shooting spree like that, you have to be, uh, you know, mentally unbalanced, which she was. Uh, and this is from the New York Times. This is by uh, Dasaki Wakabayashi, Thomas Erdbrink, and Matthew Haig. And this is an article that broke the day after the event. Uh, the event happened on Tuesday, April 3rd, and this article came out on April 4th, 2018, and this is talking about uh, the shooter, uh, whose name, interestingly enough, is Nassim Najafi Adam, and she was of Iranian, of, uh, of Persian uh, uh, descent, and she had been here in the country for, for quite a while. In Iran, was she, she a younger was known, woman, wasn't she? Rich, yeah, she, she, was, she was... Only 37 years old, according to this article, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure about that. I knew she was in her 30s, you know, and uh, I, I thought uh, when I read her age, I thought, well, that's quite young to be so disturbed about about what was going on. But go ahead, I'm sorry to, to uh, interrupt. No, no, thank you for pointing that out. I have to agree with you, Dan. This is, it's very sad that at that young age she went off the deep end, as she, she did. Uh, you know, taking your own life and, and injuring three others uh, in, in the shootout uh, prior to that. Uh, in Iran, she was known as Green Nassim, a social media star with followings on YouTube, Instagram, and elsewhere. In the United States, she cast a very different profile, a proponent of vegan diets, animal rights, and home exercise, who had increasingly become agitated by one of the tech companies that helped give her a platform. And, of course, we're talking about YouTube. She became very disgruntled with them. On Tuesday afternoon, Nassim Najafi Agdam, this woman, sneaked into YouTube's headquarters in San Bruno, California, and opened fire, shooting three people before taking her own life. And the police said Ms. Agdam's in anger over what she believed to be unfair treatment by YouTube had set her on a 500-mile drive from her home near San Diego to YouTube's offices at the northern edge of Silicon Valley. You see, California is a big state, and she drove all the way from Southern California up there to Northern California for this, this attack. And this is Rich, what was the nature of her... Con- Excuse me, what was the nature of her content? And uh, You said in 
she had two different followings, one one overseas and, and one in the United States. Is that do I have that yes. right? Yes. Yes. Well, and it's very interesting, and this article, of course, goes into some detail, but I can tell you from what I have seen, she did some really bizarre uh, things. Well, of course, she did some exercise videos, but she dressed very provocatively. Of course, she's not Islamic. She's of, of the Baha'i faith, which apparently right. is per- persecuted over there in Iran. Uh, but she, uh, for example, would uh, would wear a lot of uh, revealing outfits. She uh, was not a bad-looking woman at all. And she also would do things on the vegan diet, uh, talking about that. She she very much was uh, into animal rights and, and very much believed in, uh, you know, vegetarianism. And she uh, thought that the stuff that she was putting on there was, was one of the reasons that she had been demonetized. This is a quote from her. People like me are not good for big business, like for animal business, medicine business, and for many other businesses. That's why they are discriminating and censoring us. She said in a video posted online last year criticizing YouTube, this is what they are doing to vegan activists. She she saw herself as a vegan activist. And many right. other people who try to promote you know, healthy, humane, and smart living. She's obviously very uh, driven and, and very, very obsessed with, with her views. Uh, would you say that her content was erotic? It, I mean, you said some of it was provocative. Yeah, some, some of it, it some of it would have been considered downright uh, blasphemous uh, had she been Muslim, and I'm sure right. it, it incensed a lot of the Islamic people. Uh, uh, although her stuff went viral in Iran, so she obviously had uh, some kind of a following over there. Kind of, kind of became a bit of a celebrity over there, apparently, from what I've seen, read, and heard. And I watched uh, kind of a. YouTube video compilation. It had little elements from several of her different videos, and it uh, was a, a narrator who was talking about her beliefs in her videos. And I watched that earlier today, and it's available there on YouTube. It's pretty pretty easy to find. Part of the title was "YouTube Shooter: Who Was She?" or "Who Is She?" or, or words to that effect. So it won't be hard to to search in YouTube and find the exact video that I watched earlier, which will give you a sample of some of her videos. Now, YouTube wisely and Facebook and Twitter took all of her content down after this shooting incident, and I don't blame them. You know, they just pulled everything down. Uh, but apparently fragments of some of her videos exist in this this one that I'm talking about, this guy who had done a, a kind of a study of, of her stuff. Right. So she was she's fairly successful. Was she she getting was she making money? Like I know that you you've been talking about lately about the monetization and how they're, they're cutting back on that. W- was that an, a factor in in her, her? I guess, she was disgruntled, obviously. Uh, had she lost some of her, 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 her monetization of her videos? Or, or, Absolutely. Or, Absolutely. Or, and and as a factor, a, oh, as a matter of fact, uh, there are those uh, involved in the investigation of this, uh, including relatives, including her father even, who believe that was her motivation for the shootout. Her her motivation for going up there and shooting people was that, uh, as a matter so of she fact. She just it lost was, it. She lost a, She said they cut her off financially, and, and that triggered a, a reaction that was, like, irrevocable. She's killed people about it, over it, is what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. As, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, when she, she, she slept in her car when she got to Mountain View, and the Mountain View police actually found her, checked on her to make sure she was okay, and she, she pulled it off with them, you know, to the extent that after 20 minutes they decided, hey, this woman's okay. She came up here to try to get a job. She's trying to move to Silicon Valley, and she absolutely, they, they had, she didn't mention anything about YouTube. She didn't mention anything about Google, even though Mountain View is Google headquarters, and as you know, Google right. owns uh, YouTube. So anyway, they actually uh, contacted her father, and uh, he actually told the police uh, her father said that YouTube had recently done something that had caused her to become upset and that that may have been why she was in the area. Still, the police said the father did not seem concerned and simply wanted to let us know that may have been the reason for her to move up there. So, you know, even her own father, I don't think, was fully aware of what she was about to do. But later that same Tuesday morning, Miss Ogden went to a nearby shooting range. Then, just after noon, she parked at a business near YouTube's headquarters. She walked into one of the YouTube's parking garages, then emerged 
into an outdoor courtyard where employees were eating lunch. Emergency officials arrived at YouTube's offices two minutes after the police received 911 911 calls about Chuck being fired. When they arrived, they found Miss Ogdum dead, a 9mm semi-automatic handgun. That's what she used, a 9mm. Registered in her name was found at the scene. By Tuesday night, YouTube, as well as Instagram and Facebook, had taken down her pages and videos. And back to the motive, Dan. And Barberini, the chief of the San Bruno Police Department, said at this point in the investigation, it is believed that the suspect was upset at the policies and practices of YouTube. This appears to be the motive for this incident. So, yeah, she just went off the deep end. Unreal. That's very tragic. Uh, yeah. I did read about the bit about the gun range. So obviously, everything she did was on the up, though. I mean, as far as the, the handgun stuff. I mean, she didn't break any laws. And this is an example of of a person who who, who uh, per, perfectly legal possession of firearm, perfectly legal uh, time at I guess a, a firing range. And I, I'm assuming that they they monitor that that stuff these days. Like they make you show your ID, and I guess they can. They can trace back your time at. I think that's the way it works at you know at firing ranges now. They can trace back your time, who you are. I, I once heard that that uh, if a gun backfires or, or misfires at a a range, that the sheriffs are called automatically, and uh, the person that could has very to well be. And that's probably a good policy too, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I heard that, that. At least that's what I heard about Florida. Like you know, like one of the things is. If, you're going to go on a, a, a firing range. You don't have a registered gun and, and all this other stuff. So it's a real bad idea because uh, they, they, by law, they have to call the sheriff. And if a, a gun misfires or backfires, I don't know how, you know, a jams or something like that. And then they have to examine the weapon and all and, you know, get the serial numbers and make sure that you. So, it, yeah, you're right. It is probably a pretty good policy. I, I, I don't know if that's true in California or if it's a county by county kind of thing. But, but I did hear something like that. Uh, about this this part of Florida, anyway, the Tampa Bay area, that you know, you go in a range, you know, you better be sure that your your ducks are lined up because uh, they do keep track of that. And so this this woman sounds like she had every legal right to own a a, a what a nine millimeter. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. no reason to, to to prevent her from owning a nine millimeter, and she she used it to to do the wor- worst possible imaginable thing. Uh, I mean, how well, many, to drive to drive that vast distance? Obviously, this was premeditated and planned out, because you know right. it takes ten hours to drive five hundred miles. So I mean, you know, she thought about it all the way. She knew exactly what she was going to do, <clears throat> and it's it, it's scary that no one uh, you know detected it or intervened uh, you know ahead of time. But uh, so hard in, in cases like this to really see, you know, what what's happening sometimes. Yeah. So, how many? Well, did did two people die? Is, was there actual deaths well, inside? Here we the, go. Uh, and it, in in fact, on Wednesday, two of the people who were shot were released uh, from Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. So there, you've got a hospital there named after Mark Zuckerberg, the, <laughs> the founder. Already, huh? of, uh, of, yeah. yeah. So we're talking Silicon Valley to the hills here. You know, we're talking Facebook. There you go. A third was still in the hospital. That's the man who was critical. Now, I understand that he's still alive. I haven't heard that he's died yet. Uh, but apparently the two women were released, and then the, the man was still in the hospital, but his condition had been upgraded to serious from critical. So as of uh, the writing of this New York Times article uh, on Wednesday, April 7th, you know, it was still uh, still up in the air about his condition, but I have not heard that anyone has died yet from this other than the uh, the shooter herself who, who who shot herself, you know, committed suicide. Yeah, this is just a tragedy all the way around. And and, and and I know you've been very upset yourself about the, uh, the, the demonetization of certain well, individuals. Well, thousands, thousands of people are, tens of thousands of people are upset, but same logical people understand, hey, you know, there's a right way to go about dealing with things. You might not be happy, but you write letters, you protest, you make videos, you go and choose other platforms, you know, just like the people who left eBay and and went to Amazon or or to Etsy or to Bonanza or whatever. Well, you know, I knew 
six months ago that YouTube wasn't the only game in town and that there was always the possibility that I might be demonetized. And so at the suggestion of other people who also saw this coming, there was handwriting on the wall. There was quite a bit of warning from YouTube that, hey, we're going to cut a bunch of people. And they cut 95% of their content creators, at least in terms of the monetization. I mean, you can still upload videos. And and I do. I continue to use YouTube as a platform. I'm just not getting paid by them, which is, you know, somewhat disheartening and upsetting, you know, uh, especially when you were monetized and then all of a sudden, sudden they come along and they change the rules on you. But saying rational people don't go around and start shooting people <laughs> simply no. because a corporation, you know, is doing doing them wrong, you know, and uh, that, that's what we're looking at. Uh, and that, that's what's so sad. You asked a minute ago about some of her videos. Here's more from this article that touches on that. Mrs. Ogden dedicated several of her videos to promoting animal rights, vegan diets, and healthy living. In one video, she sat in front of a screen with a rabbit as she tried to explain in Persian the differences between vegetarianism and veganism. In another, she yeah. In another, she presented her viewers with a papaya, extolling the benefits of the fruit. Eat it when it turns yellow, she said sporting dark sunglasses and a zebra striped cowboy hat. And by the way, in that video I was talking about earlier that I saw, she had some really wild, colorful, and loud outfits. I mean, she, she kind of had the fashion model thing or wannabe going on. She, I mean, she would, she looked good in, in her videos. So she knew something about what she was doing, even if she was uh, disturbed. Well, she sounds like she comes from a culture that doesn't exactly approve of the, the sort of things that she was up to, um, you know, you know what I'm saying, the, the provocative clothing and, 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 and all the other things that you're mentioning here. And uh, that that strikes me as odd in, in itself, you know, that she she obviously would, probably wasn't raised in a world, right, where where that stuff was approved of. And I think they strongly, just, the, the Islamic religion strongly disapproves of that sort of behavior, but she was in, involved in it and obviously making some money from it to uh, to at the same time, so you know I, sometimes I had to scratch well, my head and a little and bit. If, <laughs> if a, you're right, absolutely, you're right. And yeah. if a great deal of her life had been spent dealing with uh, you know Iranian men from her culture, well, she probably was repressed or felt repressed and, and was rebelling against that. You're right; she was doing things that were not acceptable for a woman uh, from her culture to be doing. Absolutely. No, it just sounds like not, 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 not even by by any any measure at all. But then again, it, along comes big big business, and then they they I guess maybe she was depending on this, and if she's living out there. That's another thing. She's how far she was living in. Where was she living at? You're saying she, she had a, a ten hour ride, but was she in still in the state of California? Or yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was she was in Southern California. And uh, it's expensive it says, across the board. Yeah, I mean, anyway, you cut it, just, you know. She set out on a 500-mile drive from her home near San Diego. She drove all the way from San Diego uh, to YouTube's offices on the northern edge of Silicon Valley. Well, San Bruno's right up there by San Francisco. So that's how far she went. She literally traversed California from south to north, you know, 500 miles there. Right, right. Yeah, so so obviously she had money coming some in from... You know, I, I'm getting into the real estate business a little bit, and, you know, and uh, people are telling me that, you know, like a one-bedroom, one-bath condominium would cost you a half a million to a million dollars in, in, in a normal neighborhood out there in California. In other words, property's not cheap, and, and especially in the southern part, you know, as you're getting into Santa Barbara, San Diego, Sacramento, uh, L.A., of course. So she, so what you're describing to me, somebody that, that obviously had some dough coming in, or, or otherwise they were living in a very, very poor neighborhood where, you know, uh, it, it didn't matter well, to them. You know, just don't.